Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Brian, and now we're watching to Code After. So today we have another special guest. He's really from, uh, really far from my location. He's from US, and uh, his name is Paul. So let's. Any further ado, please welcome to. Paul. Hello, Paul. Hey, how are you? Hi, yes. My last name is a little weird. It's it's Mohika. Mohika. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Paul Mohika. Um, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina in the US. Um, I am a software developer, a tech lead um, at a financial company here in the US. Um, I uh, have been doing software development for approximately uh, 18 years, um, and uh, I've kind of ran the, the 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 gambit of different jobs. Um, I, I started out as network administrator, then went on to kind of full stack, and the last three or four years have been primarily focused on the front end. Okay, so uh, your name is Paul Mojica, your full name, right? Yes, correct. Yes. Do I pronounce correctly? That's correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, how are you doing? I mean, how your Good. family, how's the situation there? The COVID? Yes, uh, family, family is good. Um, the situation, um, you know, we can't complain. the The economy is kind of not great right now, but um, you know we're 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 doing good. Um, we're very lucky to um, you know just everybody's healthy and safe. So that's that's always good. Good, thank God. Yes. Uh, I mean, like I'm seeing your profile, crossing your profile. You have been had had such wonderful experiences like now you are working as senior so maybe you can tell us how you achieved it i mean what's the story behind it yes yes absolutely uh so i kind of um i come from a more non-traditional background i would say um, I did not get my first computer until I was uh, 17, a senior in, in um, high school here in the United States. Um, and I um, got that computer and it was mostly to do kind of reports and, and that sort of thing. Um, so my, my mother, she said, well, when you go to college, you should, you should um, you know, study computer science and computer engineering. Uh, so I said, okay, that sounds, that sounds good. So when I went to college, um, I was, I, I, I lived my first year in the engineering dorm and I was in over my head, my, my roommates, they, they, um, you know, they, they had been tinkering with computers since, you know, they it felt like since they were very, very young and I had only, you know, had a computer for a year or so and i came you know to to my dorm i had my here in the united states we have a store called best buy and so they're kind of the big box store you know they sell just tons of just uh computers with a bunch of software mm -hmm. on it um so i got a computer that did not have a network interface card so I couldn't even get, uh, you know, internet connection yeah. and had no idea how to even install one. Um, so they, they, I was very lucky. They kind of, you know, they helped me out um, installing it and, and getting me up to speed. So um, fast forward four years later, I graduated from school and um, I ended up getting a position at um, a uh it was a concrete company so um i i would have never known all of the software that is involved running a concrete plant 
So with there, we, um, we had to set up um, kind of a network within um, these very, very dusty and um, kind of old offices that are on concrete sites. Um, to, and, and we had to set up all the networks and such for that. Um, and what my, my kind of, after we set that up, the management said, well, let's, let's go ahead. We've got all of these processes that we're doing by hand. Um, is there any way you think you can automate these? And so I started with Visual Basic. Um, so taking Excel spreadsheets and just doing some manipulations on the, the manual work they were doing. I created you know, a macro um, in, Visual, in Visual Basic to just um, have them, because it was very repetitive work. They would go and they would edit a cell, they would calculate all the numbers and then just do that for every rec every row in the spreadsheet. So I just automated that. Um, the, they were very impressed with it. Um, so, so then um, I went ahead and I wrote some, some software in Java to um, keep track of our fleet, our, our trucks and that sort of thing. Um, and this is when I lived in Florida. Uh, and um, our company was purchased by a bigger company whose um, IT headquarters were in, was in North Carolina. And um, I moved to North Carolina, um, did a lot of reporting software, um, kind of middleware type of work on the back end. Um, and yeah, just kind of just, just grew from there. Um, it, I, I feel like it was such a, you know, long journey for, for starting at kind of just not even knowing how to install an yeah, like interface exactly. card to, to then, yeah, going and, and just writing, um, you know, just writing kind of more enterprise level apps. Okay. So basically you don't have like parents have background in technology or families with background technology? No, no. My, um, my mother was a nurse and my father, um, he was, he was older than my mother and he was actually, um, he worked at a company called Dow Jones, which was, uh, they did a lot of chemical work, um, in, in the U S here. So nothing, nothing technical with, with, with my parents at all, at all. My, my mother, she, uh, she would always not even know how to turn the computer on. So, so I was like, it's in the back. You just press it in the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm um, also remembering that I was remember my first application was built in Pestle Basic. Mm. It was like, like crude application, simple application. So what's the first, uh, your application that you have built? Yeah, so the first the first one that was an actual application and not um, an Excel spreadsheet was uh, a, tr a fleet management um, piece of software. Uh, I used Java in Java NetBeans, um, and what it was was it would connect to our SQL Server um, and it would keep track of when the trucks had to go and do maintenance. So um, we, we had a fleet of concrete trucks that needed, um, you know, we needed to keep track of when the maintenance was due on these trucks. So um, I created just something for um, the concrete dispatchers to say, oh, these, this truck is going into, um, is going to go to maintenance. So they put the date on um, when it was getting maintenance done. And then we would get an alert um, 30 or 60 days later, depending on the truck that said it needed to go into maintenance again. So there was a report that is printed out every morning to let us know which trucks needed to go into maintenance. So, so was it first. was on your college, in, in college? 
No, this was actually in the workforce. Um, in college, oh, okay. we did, in college, I had one big project that was a actually um, a voting system. So it was written in Visual Basic also. Um, and it was uh, to create an application um, we built from the ground up with the database layer and the um, the uh, uh, the the front end and the middle the middle middleware middle tier of it uh, to to keep track of of re of voting um, and and just keep track of it and have it spit a report uh, generate a report at the end on a button click. It was, it was fairly straightforward and it was just, you know, um, something that was uh, probably, that was my first one. So that you mentioned the front end and then like uh, Visual Basic, uh, how you uh, like find your passion that, I think I'm gonna more like do back end or uh, front end how how do you find that that way yeah so um that's a great question my um i believe i found my passion for the front end when um i was at a company called siemens um and we had to rewrite um a silverlight application into angular um and it was, um, you know, Silverlight was um, just announced that they were no longer going to be supported. Um, and Angular JS was the current version of Angular. Um, we did some initial writing on it, and we found this, the performance was too slow. So we decided to jump right into Angular. Um, and it, when it was still in beta. So this was before the CLI. Um, we were doing um, our builds with uh, system JS and um, you know, doing the TSC, the TypeScript compiler with the watch flag um, to do the hot reloading. And I fell in love with kind of just the way that Angular was, was written and kind of the patterns around it. It reminded me very much of um, web forms um, in that yeah. you have your uh, kind of your templating, which is your HTML. And then web forms had like kind of like a code behind, which was the server side code, which was the C sharp piece of it. And on Angular, it's your, um, your TypeScript file. And just the way you can it, like set up bindings and that sort of thing from your template to your TypeScript file and back. I, I I just that that mental model just just fit fit kind of how I thought about things, um, and just the way the fluidity of you know getting something and and um, getting it working and 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 then that constant iteration of making sure like oh do we want how do we want the screen to look how do we want it to be responsive and that instant feedback of the hot reload and you know you make you make a um a save a file and you see the screen automatically compile and, and update whereas back then with visual studio you had to stop then rerun rebuild and then see your screen so it, it was it was to me it kind of is 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 a beautiful thing to see you know that you make a change and immediately get to see it on uh on the screen yes exactly so actually uh basically you are the like visual person like right? like more like to the ui user interface and then the angular one is a good framework for me it's easy to learn i mean for the angular 4 i i guess but right now when I see Angular, it's so much like learning curve. It's really hard, you know, because they they type skip. Yes, yes, it's a lot. It it, it has a lot of um, like you said, learning curve. Um, 
But I feel like after you've been in a wallet, and for me, I'm kind of, I, I came up in that strictly typed language, you know, where everything is strictly typed and you've got that design pattern of the whole separation of concerns um, and, and that sort of thing and dependency injection. All of this to me made sense. Um, but I can see where you're coming from with, you know, having everything in modules, declaring all of your components in those modules and um, knowing that um, services that are injected into your components, you need to provide them somewhere. Um, that That is a bit of a hurdle, I feel like, for a lot of uh, people getting into Angular, especially coming from other frameworks. Um, I believe the Angular team is actually doing a great job of lessening the curve. Um, you know, first came the CLI, um, and then now I believe the next version of Angular, they're talking about possibly doing, um, uh, I think they're calling it uh, single component loading or something like that, where you don't actually have to declare the component in the module and you just have some syntax in your component that's going to go ahead and and let you load your component um, right away without having to, to declare it in a module. So um, that's the one thing I really like about Angular is that um, I feel like they were kind of, they were bit when they went from Angular JS to Angular proper because a lot of people just, they've got a lot, a lot of feedback, negative mm -hmm. feedback yeah. that they've, it no longer works. What do what are you guys doing? <laughs> and so I feel like they've um, they they've really um, upped the the tooling and using ng update and, and that sort of thing. I feel like uh, they are going above and beyond with the tooling. I I think they've got the best tooling out of all the frameworks, to be honest. Um, exactly. But, yeah. Many reasons that so good for Angular. One is like the structure the structuring for the angular is really good mm -hmm. like clean so are you still working with angular right now at the office so i i, I am um we're actually the uh the project that we're that, that i'm on now is um where we had a greenfield application to write a native application um and we're using our Angular and Ionic and Capacitor um, to use web technologies to build a native um, application. So um, we're using NGRX as our state management. Um, and I've actually demoed out using, are you familiar with Narwhal, with NX? Narwhal is, I know. Okay. Yes. Um, so we're okay. using Narwhal yeah. with the mono re uh, repo pattern to um, share our uh, libraries between our native application and our web application, which is also Angular. Um, so we've split the business logic and the presentational logic completely apart. And um, we're hoping in the future we can rewrite pieces of our web application to utilize the code that we've written on the, um, on the native app. Um, because we've completely detangled, um, uh, decoupled the business logic with the presentational logic. So now we have a library that, um, because our, our web application is pretty much has the same functionality as our mobile application. So, but the difference is the, the mobile, uh, I'm sorry, the, the web application has all of the business logic inside of the components. So we couldn't reuse all the code that was already written. Um, with the mobile app, we were able to just completely split it. And now we're using things um, like async pipe and then um, a localized component store that is um, just grabbing data, populating that data on the screen and using something like async pipe on the template and any type of interaction, we would update the observable to get that reactive screen, the, the, re, the screen to reactively um, uh, populate based on the user interaction. 
And now we can share that between our web app and our, our native app. So that's kind of the piece that we're working on. Um, we're, we're actually using um, the company that I'm at, which is um, Charles Schwab. Uh, we have a, um, a component library that's built on web components. Um, and it's using Stencil.js as the framework there to create the web components. Um, we're building a library around that, an Angular library that we can also share between our um, native application and our mobile application so that we can eventually have that same look and feel across all of our different apps. We, we currently have two different applications um, and then our native application, but um, we just wanna make sure that no matter where the, our, our users are, which application they're hitting, it's gonna be, have that same look and feel across the board. So the company fully using the Angular? The, the, um, the division that I am, yes. Um, we're, we are all using um, Angular. There's different, uh, di different divisions, different groups that are using React. Um, we are full on Angular with microservices C-sharp backend. Amazing, amazing. Really awesome. So what actually the main uh, role, I mean, main responsible uh, for you as a senior developer? Yeah, um, my I'd say probably my um, number one responsibility other than getting our native application to, to market is um, making sure that all of our different teams are all kind of um, following this, this pattern that we've done with the native application and um, making sure, so we have four different teams. We have um, my team that is currently in Charlotte. We have um, a team that's based out of um, Raleigh, North Carolina, another team based out of Austin, Texas, and then a fourth team that is offshore based out of India. Um, and so I, my kind of, um, my role is to kind of get a, a broad understanding of what the other teams are working on and make suggestions to see if we can move towards this more um, RxJS, NGRx heavy, pattern of using um, reactivity uh, through injected services and just completely splitting out the business logic and the UI components. Um, that way that whenever one team is working on a feature, um, if it's for web, it's something that can easily be ported into our native application and vice versa. So um, we don't have to rewrite the same code over and over in different applications. That's probably my primary um, responsibility right now is making sure that there's that common style guides, common kind of, um, uh, if somebody were come to look at the code base, they would see consistency between all of our different apps and all, all the different places in the code base. Oh, I see. It's heavy responsibility. <laughs> Maybe if you open hiring, you can ask. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 definitely uh, we uh, we just hired on two great guys last year, um, and we I have a feeling we will be hiring more soon. So I will definitely I'll let you know on LinkedIn and, <laughs> and, and you know let, good, let good. You know, if you know anybody or anything mm -hmm. like that. So maybe people out there, a listener out there, haven't known about like front end, back end, do you have any like tips or advice for people to, or developers to learn something like really you like? Yeah, I, I think my biggest um, advice would be um, if you have the time to do it, I, I would say constantly learn, constantly, um, like look up, um, constantly look up uh, 
YouTube videos, those are those are free. And just I listen to a lot of podcasts to kind of get a high level of things. Um, and once you start learning some of these things, just try to put together um, just a side project that that just maybe something that doesn't have to be super complex, but just get your um, get get your feet wet on seeing if you can implement what you've just learned. Um, I, I do a lot of side projects um, on GitHub. So um, a lot of things that I hear about or I want to take a look at seeing if I can implement, I, I just spin up a quick project and try to see if I can get it to work and then maybe um, build off of that to see if I can make it more complex, more complicated. That's probably one of my biggest um, pieces of advice. Um, another one is uh, just for you know mental health. If, if you feel like you're burning out, um, because I've I've been there before. I, I've definitely um, felt like I've I've been coding too much, um, and you know so it, it, th there's nothing wrong with taking you know taking a break, taking a couple weeks, taking a month, taking a couple months, just to recharge your battery. And I found that if Whenever I come back, you know, after maybe taking that little bit of break on my side projects, I get that, you know, risk, uh, that, that joy again to, to be learning new things and, and that sort of thing. Um, so that's probably my, my two big advice. Work-life balance. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> it's really time flies. Maybe the last question. So what's your next hopes or your next achievement that you want to pursue? Yeah. Um, so I, I really, I really want to um, get kind of more content out there. I, I've been trying to write more, um, but I've been really, really inconsistent about it. So um, I find that learning things, it helps me to write about it a little bit because then it forces me to make a deeper dive into what I'm learning um, and also request feedback from, you know, the community and, and see, you know, what, what, what did I get right? What did I get wrong um, in, in the things that I'm writing? So really just creating more content out there just through video or through blogs. And I want to eventually start streaming either if it's YouTube or um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Twitch. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So um, Twitch is another thing that I want to eventually do. Um, and kind of, uh, I still actually don't even have a portfolio website. That's probably another thing on my list is to, to create a portfolio website. So there's just never enough time, I feel like. <laughs> I'm waiting your blog. I mean, like your YouTube, you should do that. Create YouTube. Do yeah. another collab with me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe we can do some kind of uh, a coding YouTube kind of. Yes, program. I guess. Yes, another yeah. topic like if this is good. Yeah. we can bring it up yeah absolutely that's really nice advice and that story from paul mojica so because the time is really uh, over i think thank you thank you paul for coming yeah absolutely thank you for having me i appreciate uh what you're doing here so i'm really uh, appreciate it. yeah so that's it for today, guys. Uh, stay healthy and uh, see you in the next episode. I'm Rahan and bye-bye. Salam. Peace. Thank you. See you.